Hi everybody, I'm so sorry I was almost late today. It has been a day, let me tell you. There's a lot going on in the energy and with, you know, the ascension, <laughs> for sure. So what is up everybody? Welcome, welcome. I did just get out of the shower so my hair is wet. I promise it's clean, it smells so good. Mm, if only you had smell of vision. Anyways, welcome to day six. It's going so fast. Hi, Gigi. Hi, Lisa. Hello, everybody. Hello. Um, how is it going? How is it going? I'm just shaking off all the negative comments that keep coming my way because the shadow is just wreaking havoc, right? What you guys don't know, too, is the DM sent me love last night. And then, of course, this morning, bam. <laughs> What's up? Hello, hello. Just saying. I'm so glad you guys are here because... I need your support like there's a lot of uh, painful energies so I just want to hold strong against them so I'm glad we are together um, I'm gonna pull some card messages for the week and then we'll just kind of get into it for our healing are you guys okay with that 123 her time I know I was almost late I'm so sorry about that <laughs> I, was like, I was like whoops <laughs> um, you know it is what it is I uh, just had to respond completely with love and remove some negativity out of the way. Um, and I loved De La Roca's video today. I don't know if you guys had time to watch that. You know, um, he just, I wish I could speak more like him sometimes, right? Such a beauti beautiful vocalist. I love it. Anyways. Oh, one, two, three. I see what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great angel number it is actually um i love it i wish it was the same for me it was 223 but i love that one two three it talks about self-growth self-development taking steps to keep moving forward right and even possibly changing timelines I, and whatever else google says about it <laughs> there's multiple definitions so i love that you guys bear with me um like I said, just there's a lot of painful energies. We all are aware of um, the twin flame union and what I go with through that with that. And it is in, in full swing. Um, and then people usually tend to express things and I'm trying to respond with love. Then she, they had the nerve to tell me I need a break. That's absolutely against God right now. So I'm just letting it go. We're letting it go, right? Um, and responding in love I don't need a break because that would actually throw me out of balance so I know that's for sure the shadow um, and I didn't have a meltdown what we do need to do though is take things seriously right I love the way De La Roca said it because we aren't ready most people are not ready for the ascension okay um, they're just not and the reason why is because nobody wants to get out of their comfort zone to understand what the shadow is and to be able to fight that shadow um, nobody wants change and we don't have a choice just like De La Roca said everything I did is in the energy first and then it's going to play out in your physical environment which it's already starting to if you go back to the beginning of the work right like the Indonesia Myanmar Machu Picchu those areas are really heightening up right now because those are some of the first portals right um, and release of energies and things so how can we see if we don't know what we're looking for um, because people are looking for something right like I need proof before I do this and I need proof before I do that and they don't even realize what the shadow is which is what occurred on my YouTube channel this morning um, if you're not aware of the shadow what I will tell you is do not speak outside of love no matter what you say or what you do don't do anything outside of love okay um, especially towards myself or those that are already in the new earth because it does hurt it hurts you um it doesn't hurt us as much as it hurts you and that's where i get um, a little sad it's like are we going to be able to make it are we going to be able to rise through the shadow and get out of our comfort zone and see love through the muck and the judgments somebody actually threw the definition of judgment at me those that have worked at me with me what is judgment can you tell me not by a definition, by what God has shown you it is. What is judgment? Do you guys know? Because they literally looked up a definition of it and threw it at me and said that I did something I didn't do. 
because they can't see clearly, right? And so if we're, we're thinking judgment is something that's okay by definition, it's not, okay? Judgment of any kind is not of God, okay? So if you get caught up in a judgment or if you think I'm throwing judgment, you're reflecting your shadow. Absolutely 1000% reflecting your shadow. And if you're afraid of other people's judgments, if judgments are what's guiding you, again, shadow, they are not of God. Just like the term judgment day, God doesn't judge anybody. And this is what I keep talking about. But the more I speak of the love of God and the, and the truth of God, who's unconditional love, people literally like go against that for some reason. It's because they don't know it's their shadow. Okay. So no matter what you do, choose love. We must choose love, right? Um, for instance, I spark your shadow. So a lot of people will come on and they'll leave. They don't stay. They don't hang out with us. They don't chill with us. They don't realize that we're good people. I'm very real, right? We're all very real. We're just here riding this wave like everybody else. Okay? And if we can't get past those shadows, we're in trouble. So um, I want everybody to realize that we've got to be more of a warrior, we got to be more in a warrior stance because these energies are off the charts, off the charts. Everything I did is boomeranging back around. Okay. And if we aren't ready, can we make it? See, here's the thing is everybody can make it if they're ready, if they can see clearly, if they can stand in strength and clear all their karma, because the shadow is what creates your karma. And it does it number one, through judgment, through fear and through ego. And I keep expressing that, right? Is that making sense? So judgments are, they're just, we just need to send the love to them. And it's hard. That's one of the hardest things to do. I feel like because that is where some of the strongest religion ties are, is through judgment, right? That's what they made us think was acceptable. And that's a not unconditional love, right? It's just not. But I see that be the downfall of most people all the time because that's that's the collective conditioning oh yep see now lisa that's very interesting so i'm being tested too every time the dm rises or things occur we're gonna get tested and i have to respond with only love no matter how much it hurts and because i had tears in my eyes because i know what i've done they said i had a meltdown <laughs> Thank you, Jacint. Jacint says, I would say judgment is to express an opinion, usually an opinion of negative intent, towards someone else or towards self. It is a reflection of the shadow. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, is with judgment is you're coming from an empty space. Because it's just like when I worked in behavioral and I would have kids to adults who, you know, used violence as their way of communication would say the most hurtful things to me. And that was much easier for me to be like, they don't know, you know, they don't know my whole heart. They don't know my whole story. And so opinions or judgments are blind. Okay. As a master healer, I can't heal things in people and have judgments towards them because I see all of the reasons and the things of why we do the things that we do. And anybody in their true heart space would never really want to hurt anybody. Right. And so we have to understand that judgments at all of any kind whatsoever, even if you soften them with the per with opinion or a reflection, it hurts you. Okay. It is a reflection of the shadow. Exactly. Beautiful. Any judgments are reflections of the shadow. So if we let other people's judgments create fear within us, and De La Roca's video was so good about this because I keep saying this, right? But... I spark people's shadow more than he does. <laughs> and he's just really good at being in, in the public eye. He's handsome. You know, he doesn't go through all the pain that I do. So he's a little better at it. I can admit that. <laughs> so I thought I would use his video today. And if my crying makes you think I had a meltdown, good Lord, I don't know what else to tell you. But I stand strong and I'm here, right? We're going to rock this. We're going to heal. We're going to rise above. Because that's what I do. And I immediately reflected it with love. Now, you guys don't understand the pain that I'm feeling because I think the DM's trying to rise. So whatever healing comes out today, I want to make sure that I bring an intent of protections for him and myself and for all of us even more. Um, but the thing is, is 
If you accuse me of doing something and it comes from an empty space, understand that that is a reflection of them and of you, right? So be mindful of that. Any, the tests of the, of the tribulation, Revelations 21, 12, and 13, I talk about this a lot. The biggest testaments are, can we see past the shadow and choose love no matter what is coming against us? Are you a warrior? We need warrior stance. And didn't he say that? Like, I've been saying that. I love how he truly does reflect on the truth of what I've done. What a beautiful soul he is. I just wish I was as good at it as he is. <laughs> Maybe people would be able to hear me better. And I didn't have all that pain, right? Because the pain is true. Like, it's palpable, you guys. Um, I don't know how I make it sometimes. But I do. I can't give up. Um, so, you guys, anywhere there's judgments, if you see a judgments, if you see something in me, it's a reflection of you. And I say this time and time and time again. And whenever I speak about true love of God and how he's unconditional love, that invokes people's shadow tenfold, right? Oh, I love that, Lisa. Thank you for sharing that. So Lisa says, I'm still trying to fully understand what judgment is and when I do it. And that's a great, great point because the person on Facebook, I tried to get them to see that it was their shadow, but they just kept coming at me with negative comments. And so I had to delete it. Um, because I, and I just sent love their way. I just sent love their way. That's all I can do. Right. So, but you're ready to hear, you're ready to hear, you show up, you show up against it and you know, I mean love. So I'm absolutely happy to tell you judgment is not of God. It's shadow. So whenever you look at somebody and they invoke something in you, so you know how we're, we're taught this through love. We're taught conditional love. That's all we're taught. Right. Yes, I love that too. We are taught conditional love. We're not taught unconditional love. Most, some of us are. Very few though. Very few and far between. Most of us are taught conditional love. We are taught that if you don't do this, you're not good enough. If they don't do that, they're not good enough. Um, we're taught to, to judge people who are less than us. That's a good, and I quote that for a reason because who says who's less than you? I remember when some of the people were rising with me through the portals um, they, they fell hardcore into judgment and God would show them that even this one guy who was like cussing and he would smoke a lot of pot and he was doing these, all these other things was still rising to God. Okay. So we assume that people are, are not good enough. We assume that they're disgusting. We assume all these things. Now I use the word disgusting for celebrating bloodshed and for celebrating the downfall of the karmic. That is gross. We don't want to do that. That's a disgusting vibration that we don't want to have. I'm not talking about the people. We don't know. So they're misconstruing. They're taking a word that I used and they're trying to use it against me. And what I'm going to tell you is that right there is judgment. They are knee deep in it. Okay. But we're taught this. That's what we're taught to do. We're taught to, if they're not good enough, move on. Right. But um, how can we tell what's karmic and what's love and all of those things? The, the best way to understand this is consider everything as a reflection of you, but that's the way it's designed to be because that way we can go internal and heal it and send love. So anywhere we express, well, they, they laugh at people, they mock them, they, they make assumptions. Okay. Is that making sense? Hello. Hello. Is that, is that helping Lisa? So anywhere judgment lies, it's not of God. Judgment at all to the totality of what it is, is not of God. So if you're seeing something in a lens towards somebody, first of all, you can only see in them what's in you to see. Okay. Hello. Hello. I see you. Um, and I'm just answering Lisa's question. So that's where I'm at. Um, but I see you. Welcome. Welcome. So glad you're here. We're going to do a quick message and then we're going to get into day, what are we, day six, right, of the angel healing. I'm super excited. Um, yeah, I don't know what's coming. <laughs> I have not had time because there's been a lot of energy shifting today. And when the energy shifts, it definitely gets shot towards those of the light's way, right? And so this is really good to talk about because the shadow's rising. In the return of Christ, when I was activating all the things and it's, it's rising and it's starting to hit now in the collective soul and we can't stop it. We don't fully understand it. And sometimes the energies are so intense that we don't know what to do with them. Right. And they can get overwhelming. 
And because I cried, they're like, you had a meltdown. You need time off. And they don't realize that they're totally reflecting the shadow because God wouldn't say that to me. Okay. So if we can't say anything out of love, don't say it at all. Number one, use everything as a reflection of you. Okay. Well, I'm seeing in this person what is upsetting me, right? Or this person does drugs. I'm judging them. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, ew, stay away from that. Ew, don't do that. Oh, they're this and they're that. So they took a word that I said that celebrating somebody's demise and bloodshed is, is, is judgment. Um, and I said, no, it's just disgusting. <laughs> like it's gross, right? It's low vibrational. That's not a judgment. And so we don't have a clear understanding of what judgment is. But how would we? That's what they teach. What do they tell you? God judges. They, they called it judgment day. That's how deeply ingrained the shadow is. Okay. So, um, Lisa, if somebody comes around you and makes you feel less than, understand that's the shadow. Okay. Do not let their shadow affect you. We have to heal to a state that we know who we are and that we're confident in love. And that no matter what is coming against us, we only reflect love back, not fear, not ego, because those are all based out of judgment and ego and all, they're all related. So when our vibration gets super high, we don't need to even reflect those back at all, right? We can kind of see clearer and we understand that it's their shadow reflecting. And maybe at one time it reflected through us and that's why we can see it. And now it's our time to send love their way. And I tried to do that with this person, but they kept engaging me in an argument. <laughs> and I'm like, no. And so finally, it was just like, I love you. I love you. That's all I could do. Um, and I let everything else go. Okay. Does that make sense? All right. So judgment is not of God, my friends. Judgment of any kind, any kind. In behavioral and psychology, this was so easy for me <laughs> to see that because when you have kids that only express through violence and they don't know you and they call you a fat orangutan, I couldn't help but laugh. You know, it's like they don't know me and I wasn't overweight at that time. It was just the only dagger they had to throw. But for some reason, through the return of Christ work, things can hit hard. You know what I mean? When people can't see who you are, it can hit hard. So consider that your reflections are also their reflections and it goes both ways and we don't want to pick them up. We have to be strong to stand against them because that's the only way they're going to heal and that's the only way we're going to help everybody else heal out of them. The moment we can get to a spot where, hey, I can't let this bother me. Remember the Sekhmet portal, you guys. Lisa's almost there. The Sekhmet portal is filled with wrath, okay, because that's what happened and what killed her. Um, and that is the final portal. But throughout every portal, we have remnants of each portal. Okay, this is Revelations 21, 12, and 13. And so those are the testaments of God. No matter what is thrown you at you, can you stand strong against them? Can you still continue to your light, to shine your light and not let anything stop you? That's the true testament to God. And that's the warriors that I talk about that we need to be. And it's not easy. And just like De La Roca said, it's not easy. He said it so beautifully. And I will try to take pointers from De La Roca. Okay. I, <laughs> I said that to myself today. Like I will try to take pointers to how he delivers stuff because it was very beautifully said and it reflect everything that I've been saying. He is definitely connected. He is totally tuned in to God's heart. Um, so where that person was accusing me of judgment, they were actually reflecting their own shadow because that's my job. And that's the only bummer part is that if people can't strong, stand strong against that, which each one of you did at some point, each one of you had a reflection of judgment towards me or something. And it almost got you to stop your journey with me. Am I wrong? Let's totally be honest about that because I've seen it happen to every single person I've come into contact with during the return of Christ work, during the ascension and bringing it through. Um, each person was met with a temptation of the shadow. Correct. See, to consider I'm doing something not of light, but it's false. And the moment you chose to stand against that and see clearly and heal it or whatever, or correct it or talk about it, bring it to the light. It went away hundred percent on point. 
thank you. So that's what we're, that's why not everybody can make it, okay? Because they're not strong enough to see beyond the shadow. Thank you, you guys. Yes, correct, correct, correct. Every single one of you. And the ones that made it are the ones that didn't let it blind them. Numerous times. Thank you. Just saying, yes. Thank you for being honest, you guys. Because I feel like either people become afraid to admit that and shy away because when they think of who I am, maybe they do know who I am. And that shines through and then they worry, right? There's some of that. And then others can't see beyond what that is. And so it's happened several times. I love that. You guys are so honest. Thank you for being honest in that because it might help somebody. Uh, we all seen a lot of people do it, right? There were supposed to be 10 of us making it through, but some of them couldn't see beyond that point. They got stuck and God said that. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Several times it reared its nasty head and that's what other people are doing. And, you know, for me, it gets taxing because I know if people can't see beyond that and rise above to love, that's your key to making it through the ascension. Each time it rears its ugly head, those are the 13 gates of tribulation. It will rear its ugly head for however it gets you. So wherever your weak point is, I will reflect that for you because I can't help that as a master healer or the one who truly did bring it about. Okay, so that's why God says everything that happens is a reflection of you, right? Yes, thank you. I love how that, see, this is so good. This is what we need. We need more of truth and how it really works and how to stand together through love. And the, one of the most beautiful things is if we all talk about it and be like, hey, this is what I'm seeing. Can we talk about this? It clears it. The moment... When I was resurrect, doing the resur freeing Jesus' soul time frame, like I had that. It got in my head and I started saying these horrible things started like coming out about myself. And I had to take a step back and go, wait a minute, that's not me. And the moment I did that, it went away. So the moment we can come together and say, whoa, what is that? Why is that being caused? Why am I seeing that? It starts to go away, right? we don't we weren't taught to do that we were taught that God judges we were taught fear the lens of fear that, that nasty lens of fear it's painful right um, we don't know we don't know how to express the truth sometimes because we weren't able to do that we weren't taught to do that um, fighting it does us no good right you can't hear when we're when we're in a crisis mode we can't hear when we're angry so the main key to the ascension and why we're not ready, this is what my video was about. And because I was crying, they tried to say I was having a meltdown. You guys, I take it seriously because I want everybody to ascend and I know what's coming. It's not the end of the world, okay? Some people are gonna be there, they're gonna think it is. Again, a lens that we can't see past and some people are gonna not see anything happening at all <laughs> and that's not good either. Um, for most of us, we know some things here that we fully can't understand. And the shadow is rising and it is a battle for the soul. It's a spiritual warfare, okay? Um, and if we're not ready, if we're not strong enough and we're not willing to take our power back, yes, exactly, Shaska, Sashka, I'm so sorry, you have such a beautiful name. I remember saying that to you before and I don't wanna do it injustice. But if we're not willing to take our power back from that shadow and only choose to speak love against it, no matter what it is trying to get us to do, we won't make it. Fear will make you fall. Love will make you rise. That is what Sashka said. And that is absolutely true. Okay. Judgments will make you fall. Love will make you rise. Um, the wrath will make you fall. So anger, love will make you rise. Let's keep going because these are the shackles that bind us. Control will make you fall. Love will make you rise. Freedom, freedom, knowing how money works, taking your power and being willing to stand in it against people's judgment, against shame, against all of those things, because none of that is God. God is unconditional love. Okay, God is unconditional love. So this person, I'm sending them so much love. I hope they can understand this. They weren't getting it there and I could feel the energy it wasn't good. Um... Yes, if you judge, there isn't love. 
but also we're wounded inside, right? So we don't know how to love ourselves fully either. And that's where it comes from. Okay, because that's what we were taught. We were taught to be judgment. We were taught to be an ego. We were taught to be more controlled by money. We were taught that we had to work through the matrix in order to survive. We weren't taught how to call in money. Yep, exactly. Love is unconditional and don't have judgment. And when you see things, reflections, it's a wound that's in you to heal. Okay? So even when the word judgment comes up, nope, back off and send it love. Okay? <laughs> All right? Seriously. Because if you can't see my whole heart, how do you know what I'm coming from? This person literally said I had a meltdown. And because I cried, because we're not ready. I know what I did. I know what's coming, you guys. It's not the end of the world, but it is the end of ways. It is the end of days for some, not for all. And only those who can't rise to unconditional love. You feel me? Can I get an amen? So even just a simple going, hey, this is getting me, hey, is this a true reflection? That can help. Or something might be wrong here and we give space and we try to rise above. That can help. Okay, because the shadow will play tricks on you. And I'm so thankful all of you came and spoke your truth today because it just might help somebody else. Okay, so at this point, the energies this week are, it's going to kick your ass. We are not ready. As a collective whole, we are not ready. Okay. Yes, thank you, Lisa. Put that under that video if you don't mind. <laughs> I was definitely showing my vulnerability. I was showing my truth and all the pain, right? But I spoke of love. I didn't speak of anything but love in that video. And I made sure of that. Yeah, so definitely, there you go again. That was more of a reflection of their shadow and their judgment. Beautifully said. And I hope that helped you, Lisa. And I hope that helps anybody else understand that, yes, I invoke your shadow. Every single one of these ladies that rose with me got invoked several times and probably wanted to throw daggers at me themselves because they didn't know, right? <laughs> right? Um, and, and even sometimes it would affect me too. But we would have to take a step back. And as long as we don't let that stop us and we come back in a space of love, we grow stronger every time. Yes, I love this, Sashka. Welcome to the group. First is self-love, then ability to share it and lighten other people's life in various ways and make changes on better. Exactly. But you guys, they have it so deeply ingrained in us from religious ties, which are not of God. God cannot be a division, okay? And you have all these different avenues of religion. No, we're all connected under God. It's all one love. All right, so there's no division. We all matter. It's all the same. So that alone is a division and judgment alignment, okay? And it is so ingrained deeply in people. Now, I find it very interesting that the only time it really rears it, its head is when I speak of true God and the Garden of Eden being anchored in because I know I processed the earth's death, took her through the gates of heaven, and she became all of the Garden of Eden. So only those who are warriors of that light, warriors of unconditional love, willing to face the shame, the ego, the shadow, the judgment, and stand strong to help others through, we're the ones that make it. And that's why on the path, only a few actually made it through and when we were supposed to have 10. We were supposed to have 10. That went through with me at that first go around. Yeah, and we had how many? Four? Ew. So the shadow and judgment can really get you. And that's why I say we're not ready. And that's why De La Roca was saying that. He feels it in the energy too. And Lisa's right. I don't need a break. I wasn't having a meltdown. I was expressing my vulnerability and my truth. Which was expressed through love the whole entire way through. I love that. Thank you, you guys. Are you ready for the weekly message in day six of Angel Healing? Woo woo! And I'm so glad somebody else is here with us and somebody else trying to be too. Maybe next time they'll push past their shadow and they'll realize it's not love and they'll take their power back and rise above. All right, my friends. Let's see what this week is going to hold, shall we? 
I love this. I love this, you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being honest and vulnerable yourselves and expressing our truth. Yes. And for standing against the shadow and realizing that what I reflect is of you and what you reflect back to me would be the same. Because um, that is God's gift to us, right? You did. You got it right, sunshine. You absolutely did. Yes. Energies are very important, but keeping them consistent through meditations. If disturbed, please look deep, heal, and bring them back only with self-love. Yes. And it's not always easy, right? But it is very important. Yes, you got that. I love it. Thank you. And that's why meditation is very important as well, right? Um, and I don't like the term mindful. I like the term mindless. Because the less we're in our mind, and that's what meditation does. The less we are in our mind, the more we call our power back. Did you know that is one of the gates of the 13 gates? That is one of the testaments to God, is the control of our mind. We have to take back that control. And that's what meditation does. And you'll hear a lot of people struggle that battle at first, right? Like they'll say, like, I can't do it. And they tell them, you got to keep going. We have to reprogram the mind. Because that is the ego... That is where the shadow gets in. That is where our major power escaped from. Let's do this. All right. Oh, you guys, this was good. I needed this. Thank you to everybody who's here. And let's call in more people strong against their shadow, okay? I think we need that. I love it. Thank you for your honesty. All right, spirit. So let's call this in. I haven't even lit a candle, you guys, because of that attack on, on YouTube and everything. Just, I would call it a misunderstanding and not seeing clearly through the shadow, right? And then I was like, well, maybe I'll turn the comments off. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. Yes, it is not easy. That's why not everybody is going to make it because they don't want to. <laughs> They're not ready to stand strong. They don't like change. And just like De La Roca said, you guys, what's crazy is he doesn't know me. Um, but he speaks everything that I, that I tell you and everything that I do shortly after I do it. So he's definitely connected. Okay. Um, and he shines his light bright and he does it beautifully. And he is also a twin flame. I don't know if you know that he's, he's not a direct, he's like one down. Um, but he's a twin flame. So he is part of that light in the dome. Um, so it's beautiful. But, um, he even tells you that, you know, you don't have a choice. <laughs> You don't have a choice. It happens in the energy first, and then it will happen in the physical, and it's already doing both, okay? So everything I did is truly starting to play out in your physical. It's already happening in the energy, and you have to be strong to rise above. And because some people don't like change, they don't like to get out of their comfort zone, and they also don't understand the shadow all the way, that's why we say we're not ready, okay? Okay. The key components are that warrior stance against that shadow, against judgment, because any judgment of any kind is not of God. It takes every single walk of life to make a full circle. Can I get an amen? Every color under the sun, every language under the sun, we are all one. It doesn't matter, including aliens, the white ones. <laughs> that might free me below. They're not ready for that either, right? <laughs> All right, so I call on the creator of all that is and all the angels too to surround us now in the highest light in and the highest light out possible. Allow this to be a place of strength and love and light and unity of love under the sun and under the one. Can I get an amen? Oh, I call in the energy of Father Sky and Mother Earth. I call in the north, the east, the south, and the west, and the west back to the north in a complete circle of love and support and unity under the sun. I call in all elements to anchor us in and their strength, power, creation, and healing support. And I call in any angels that are going to join us today as well. And I'm also feeling more pyramids coming into play. So I will complete that after I give our message. But I solidify this connection, this union of love, and this protection again in the highest light in and the highest light out only. So be it. Allow us to see clearly what we need to see. Allow us to rise above in strength we didn't even know we had, but we truly do have. And allow us to receive with grace and ease. So be it. All right. So, 
Let's see what we have to say or what's coming for this week ahead because I was going to do that earlier too. So spirit. Oh, I got to grab my ascension deck, they said, and a surrendering deck. All right. So we have 333, the pe three people with 33 comments. I love it. Hopefully I didn't lose anybody in <laughs> drawing that in. Come back. Come back. <laughs> All right. So what do we need to see this week, Spirit? Please show us. This is from my Ascension Portal Messages deck. The one I actually channeled through as I was opening up the portals of Ascension. So these were all the pyramids, the Sphinx, all of that. Whoa, these are just flying out uncontrollably so falling out let me grab them hang on okay yes so again these are something we need to constantly have reminders of okay the new earth is about balance if we are not balanced from the heart center and remove all the matrix we're not in the new earth period and it's not an easy adjustment, okay? Because we are so governed and controlled by the matrix in so many ways, through fear, through money, through everything. And we don't understand the power that's within us until we truly heal back to our heart space and completely can enlighten through that. So balancing forces within and around you, okay? Higher frequency energies require full balance. This is where maximum abundance begins, okay? If you're not having abundance right now, it's because you have healing to do or you're not balanced from the heart center. You're letting one of the shackles govern you. Okay? Um, I get this card all the time and I'm constantly like, okay, where am I out of balance now? <laughs> true, true story. So, and then consider I'm a twin flame. So I'm working through two people and there's a separation there shouldn't be. So it's quite complex. So I know it's not always easy, okay? We can't let the shackles that bind stop us. Mysterious things begin to occur. The moment we like the moment we listen to the gentle messages spirit brings, that is when mysterious things begin to occur. Now remember the shadow is very loud. It's in your face, it's heavy, and it makes you think things that are not real. It's an illusion and it's a powerful one. That's Mount Shasta, right? Um, so mysterious things will begin to occur when we bypass that, when we can step back and we can look to love instead. And we can listen to those gentle nudges and they are gonna ask you to be vulnerable because the shadow will try to stop you, okay? So that is being called forward. Remember to listen to the gentle nudges, not the extremely powerful loud shadow. Imagination equals creation. Everything you see came from somebody's imagination, including the matrix. It's not of God. Heart center is our, is our passion. It's our imagination. It's where we, we were before all of the shadow took over. So that's why they talk about healing your inner child. It's taking us back to the innocence of who we are. And then we create from balance from there. And that's where we have to get to. Okay? We can't let anything else control us. We just can't. Okay? So, if somebody else's imagination created this thing and that thing, why can't you do that too? You can. All right? So, true empowerment coming forward this week ahead. Um, we need to understand that warrior stance is required. I keep saying that. Okay? Are you, can you guys hear me? It's telling me to close other applications or browser tabs. And I don't have any open. So if you guys can hear me, please let me know. I want to make sure my Wi-Fi on my phone is off. It is. Beautiful. Aww. 
<laughs> Thank you, Lisa. That's probably where she went for a moment. Yes, okay, perfect. Thank you, you guys. All right, so let's see what we need to surrender this week, okay? With these energies coming, let's see what we need to surrender. Whoa. All right, we have a few cards that flew out on that one. Four, to be exact. Surrender denial. And didn't De La Roca say denial? What are people doing? Well, I need to see this, and I need to see that. I need to see the Nile dry up before I believe it. Then it's too late. And like De La Roca said, you'll be caught with your pants down. You don't have time to wait. <laughs> if you're waiting to see things, you can actually see things if you know what you're looking for. It's already happening. Okay? <laughs> so surrender denial. Accept people and situations exactly as they are. We always try to change things to fit our scenario, right? Without denying the difficulties. Because that's why a lot of people don't want to get out of their comfort zone. It's difficult, right? Then you can see things clearly and make the best decisions. And we don't realize that the shadow makes it seem difficult. But if we stand and we rise above and our vibration is high and we always choose love, hi, Amy, it's not as difficult as it presents, okay? So we are working through some weekly messages and then we're going to get right into the healing. So welcome. You came in a good time. Um, check out the comments. This has been one absolutely amazing video, Amy. Now, Amy, I have a quick question for you. How many times on your path did you reflect judgments of me? Like, can you guys express that better? Like, what did I say the first time? Each one of you on the path working through me had a shadow present to make you think that I was something that I'm not, correct? Or to try to stop you or to reflect judgments, right? And it almost blocked you. Each one of us admitted that, right? Like, I reflect your shadow. That's what I'm supposed to do. And so through the path, some of us anchored into that, right? But some of us choose to keep seeing beyond that and keep rising above to love no matter how difficult it was. And that is why some of us aren't ready right now for what's coming. Because some of us aren't agreeing to let ourselves do that. But it takes that to make it through. And so I love that. We've all admitted to that. And so that's kind of where we were at. <laughs> I loved that empowering moment. All right. So this week we also need to surrender stress. Surrender stress. Oh, good Lord. Take it away. Take a few deep breaths and exhale the tension you've built up in your body. Let the stress go as you come back to your center. Surrender denial. Surrender stress. Surrender worry. Mm. Mm -hmm. Make a commitment not to lead an anxiety-driven life. When worries arise, breathe them out of your body. Focus on the power of your heart and have faith that spirit is guiding you always. And that brings us back to those gentle nudges. Spirit is much more quieter. You have to be able to tune into here to hear it. But the shadow is extremely loud and convincing. It gets in your face and it blinds you, okay? But God wouldn't do that. Surrender worry, it's like I said, and then surrender to spirit. This is beautiful surrenders for this week ahead. This is for this whole entire week. Surrender denial, no matter how difficult the situation is, then you'll be able to see things clearly. Surrender that stress, surrender the worry, and surrender to spirit. Beautiful. Once you've done everything you can to achieve a goal, turn the situation over to the divine. Let spirit work its magic for you. And we don't, we're not taught to do that. So I tell you, money is energy. We call it in. We don't have to bust our ass working for somebody else in the matrix. Trust me. It's hard to understand, though, because the conditioning is very anchored in. Okay. Um, one more card here for the week ahead and then we will be doing day six I needed this I don't know about you guys but I sure needed this get together today and when they're like oh you're having a meltdown you need time off I was like oh that is so the shadow <laughs> that is not love because <laughs> you don't know me if I take time off guess what would happen 
I would be out of balance because these are my joys. <laughs> I don't work my ass off. I can't do another job. This is my heart center. Ah, yay! I love it. Great on you, Lisa. Woo woo! You're doing it, girl. You are doing it. All right, my friends. Let's see here. One more out of here to finish our weekly read message. And if you need any help during the week, go back and do this one again, right? Turn it over to spirit. Perfect. And then choose love. Choose love. Reflect love. Remember what discernment really means. People use discernment for judgment, and that's interesting to me. Um, but it's just another contrast, okay? Discernment means see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil. Okay, so choose love, speak love, be love, and walk away from anything that's not. And give it to God. Do the things that you can do from your heart-centered creation and trust in the universe to have a positive return back to you. Okay? All right. So we have She of the Lotus. Then we have Evolution. Hmm. These energies are palpable and they're designed to make you evolve. Okay? And then we have Star Seed Elemental. Now I saw something I found interesting is we're so not used to our spirit being connected to us completely that we all think we're star seeds. <laughs> and that was like, bing, light bulb, right? Um, you're all chosen ones. If you are here in this lifetime, you are a chosen one because this is the great reset. Okay. So you said, Hey, I'll be strong enough. I'm ready to show up. It's whether we can get there or not. That's up to you, but you're all a chosen one. If you're here in this lifetime for whatever purpose you are to serve. Okay. So I feel like we've kind of, that's also like another divide, right? Like they're this and they're that and they're that. Amy says, yes, I can test. It is harder than we think, but when it's done, you will feel better and rise. Exactly. So she's admitting to coming to, to the head with the shadow many times over because I reflect your shadow. But each one of these ladies chose to rise above it and continue going on the path. That's what separates the warriors and the ones who are going to make it from the ones who are not. And the starseed elemental with evolution talks about you coming into more of who you are this week. We are supposed to be. But we have to be able to see past the shadow and grow a beautiful flower amongst the muck. Choose beauty, choose love over the shit that's piling in. Because the shadow's rising. Okay? So not only did I bring about the return of Christ, I invoked the entire shadow. I rose it out of the collective soul and it's attacking. Your shadow has to rise. And what created your karma is the shadow. So at some point, the shadow got in your head and got you to pull away from unconditional love. And the only way to make it through is to not let that do that anymore. Does that make sense? That's judgment, ego, fear, the shackles that bind. Listen, I had to quit my job, you know. You, I have to trust that everything is going to be okay, just like we all do. We have to get out of our comfort zone. We have to trust. We have to believe in the creator that you are. But they have done so much damage to our collective soul. So much. So let's choose to rise above, okay? And unite in love. Now, who's ready for some angel healing? I am! <laughs> and I have to tell you, it's not a surprise that I was attacked on, on YouTube today. It's just somebody reflecting their shadow. It's not necessarily an attack, but I can feel it physically too. Because the DM gave me a lot of love last night. So I want to thank him. I feel him. I hear him. And I love him. Let's anchor into that love. I am ready. Yes, let's do this. All right, my friends. Day six. I have no idea what's coming. But let's choose to rise and rise above. So I've called on the creator and now I will call on whatever angels that are going to join us today. We have Ariel, we have Jophiel, we have Metatron for the Merkaba. <sighs> Great. So we're going to be doing at the very least some Merkaba activation, balancing, alignment, and healing. Whatever else comes our way. I'm just going to roll with it. I don't even know. So let's just breathe. Let's just put our feet on the floor and our palms facing up. 
I call in any angels also to help remove any negative energies from our space at this time. And that circle of salt is drawn again and even more powerful this time. And with the circle of salt, I'm putting the white flame and the violet flame. Oh yeah, a nice purification that I'm going to draw you all into. So I'm going to pull you in one by one, those are with me now and later, into the salt of protection and divine purification of the white flame and the violet flame. So one by one, just close your eyes and relax. And I'm going to start drawing us into this energy. Uh, excuse me. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, oh, my goodness. Excuse me. I'm re releasing a lot. As even drawing you into the flames of the white and the violet is already releasing a lot of things. And I'm just going to have Michael call in to help also disconnect any ties, any energies that are not of us, that don't belong and that are not of the light. I'm hearing stay strong. They're telling me to stay strong. DM rising. Uh. So as I'm calling us all in, we will be sitting around Lake Titicaca. That's what I'm hearing. So I just I'm drink I'm bringing in the energy of Lake Titicaca, which is was the hub of Atlantis. That is true. That is where my flame went out, and that is where the white flame was reborn. Uh. All time undone. Remember. Uh. Excuse me. Lots of releasing. I feel like we're all drawing into the circle of protection of salt, the violet flame, and the white flame. And the angels are coming around us now. And so are the lions. So we are also being surrounded by the lions of Sekhmet. Those that are joining me get a special opportunity to walk across the Nile, the water, before it dries up, because it will. So I will walk you energy, energetically through the Nile, and it's going to cleanse your feet at some point today. Uh. So just breathe and close your eyes. Be still in your body, your soul, and your presence. Follow my voice the best you can. Try not to let the mind take you away. And if any time it does, just tra tra trace your body. Take your focus from your head, down your face, down your chest, down your tummy, and to your legs, and to your feet. And that will help recenter you and bring you back to me. Palms facing up, feet on the floor. I am bringing in the energy of the Nile to get to Lake Titicaca. I will walk you across one by one over the Nile. Now remember, we're all still surrounded by the salt circle. It doesn't go away till the end of the transmission. All angels are surrounding us. This is a gift. This is a blessing for those standing, for those coming, for those showing. It is an opportunity not given to all. So understand, it's, it's a beauty. It's a good thing. So I see the Nile, and then I see Lake Titicaca, and we must cross the Nile to get there. Now this Nile is going to heal you in ways you didn't think of, okay? It's going to expose a shadow in ways you didn't think of, and you must choose love rise above rise above if successful the Nile will clear those components with you and for you in due time of choice of choices made in disguise I hope that's clear for some of you that is the case for others already in the new earth it is a cleansing it is a purification and a clarity of due time, a clear path, perspective, perception, and reflection, and healing. So one by one, I'm going to take you by the hand of your soul, stand you up, 
and begin to walk you across the Nile. And we will sit by Lake Titicaca. Ah. Your feet begin to go into the water. This cleansing water feels very cold, very cold, almost like icicles. It is removing deep layers, deep layers of muck from your feet up. Every step that you take, it's bearable, but is cold for a reason. Be brave to walk against the cold. Be brave to walk where others don't want to go. For at times it will feel very cold and very alone, but you are not. You are not. An individual journey of all connected. Stand against the changing tides and take a step, one by one, through the Nile, through my river, through the river of life. And on the other side, you will be met with the grace and the warmth and the light of the sun, of the one, and of Lake Titicaca. So I am bringing you through now, one by one, together, an individual, cleansing and purifying, and removing what does not belong. Consider it washing your feet, because I am. It is said Jesus washes your feet. Well, that's what I'm doing. One by one, you take that step through the rigid cold water of the changing tides. You agree to release what seems so tough, but in truth, it's really not. We just rise and we rise and we rise above to the blue skies and that of love. And one by one, we're making it across. And I will place you around Lake Titicaca. <clears throat> there is a pyramid in the center. We will sit around. So imagine going across and sitting in front of a pyramid. It is a white pyramid. Glowing gold. It is mine. For all true pyramids were made by God, not mankind. Other ones are not true pyramids at all. They're tombs. There's a difference. One by one, we are making it across the Nile, and I am washing your feet, anointing you in the Nile, a different kind, and placing you around the pyramid at Lake Titicaca. done that. Welcome to a second layer anointing. Now the angels are coming around as we are sitting around Lake Titicaca and some of us still making our way there. And they're going to begin cleansing your aura. Michael, Archangel Jophiel, Archangel Ariel, and Metatron is with us as well. St. Germain comes in with the Akashic Records also. That way he can record what is releasing, what is healing, and what's next on your path. I have a special being coming in and removing all this in because I don't think you guys realize that, like I said, the energies are painful for me today. And so they're pulling them out of my shoulders and my head and my neck. Literally like a, 
almost like a shirt they're pulling off of my back. They're just pulling this energy off of my back. <sighs> the energy of lack is also being removed out of our aura and our energy at this time. <sighs> the energy of confusion. Yeah. <sighs> of judgment and of lust, the energy of regret, and any other energies that don't belong, including entities that are not aligned with the one. So what some people would call reds and grays and all of those things are being removed from your energy at this time completely. And we're just being cleansed and prepped, cleansed and prepped. For again, you guys are going to take on more of the light of the sun um, to help align and heal and rejuvenate and awaken. Okay, that's the very least. And we are also expanding the sun ever so slightly. Um, whatever that means, I will be doing that as well. Uh. And then Metatron is going to help you with your Merkaba. And more. Oh, uh. <sighs> and then like the card said, we are dissipating stress. <sighs> and all of those things that don't belong, that are not of love that keep us from the balance from our heart space. The shackles that bind, fear and stress, oops, worry and denial. So I'm just holding space because they're clearing this energy from my back. I can't heal you completely and powerfully with anything that doesn't belong. So they're doing that for me, but also for all of us. And they're opening up my heart space even more. As I begin now to draw down the light from the heavens above. And this one is going to come down in the yellow and golden rays of Christ's light. So it is coming down through our higher chakras. This is very relevant for the color of the rays, okay? And it's gonna help to purify our upper chakras of divinity. So our soul star connection, um, everything that you can think of that connects us to the divine, to the pure essence of who we are, is being cleansed. For some of us, activated and awakened. For others, just completely cleansed first because we also have to purge some emotions sometimes too, right? So whatever is for you is for you at this time. So I'm bringing those down further into your crown. And I can feel that. Again, I can feel it opening up my crown chakra. Bringing it down further into our third eye. These are golden rays of Christ's light. So it's Christ's light, but buffered through the rays, which is how I've brought them to earth. So it can be quite powerful at times, okay? It's, it's meant to purge. These are true healing. So if you feel a little yucky before you feel better, that's why. You know it's working. Through our third eye now, it is opening and prepping into our throat, into our heart, into our solar plexus. And this includes all the other chakras in us that have more. Opening that up. And after yesterday, I don't feel so blocked. Woo, yesterday there was a lot to move. I don't feel that today. So just recognizing that. And down into our navel and our sacral. And down into our root. Down our legs and into the earth. And this time, are you ready? I'm taking you to the core. 
So our connections from our feet only going through the earth star chakra and through the layers of the earth, the rock layer, the water layer, the crystalline grid and into the core, deeply into the core. And I'm going to wrap your roots around the core. And from there, I'm drawn to the pyramid. We are all sitting around at Lake Titicaca. So I want you to just be with your eyes closed and see if you can feel that energy. If you can see it, great. If you can't, that's okay. Tune in. Go from your heart and forward. Take your focus to your heart and move it forward. This is important. So draw your focus to your chest and push it forward until you feel like you are there. Because if there's a barrier in your heart, you won't see it, you won't feel it, and you won't receive it all the way. So keep taking your focus down from your crown to your heart and pushing it forward. You are now attempting to connect to my pyramid. This is the sun god portal, one of them. This is Lake Titicaca, where I rose, where the white flame was snuffed out at one time, and where it was reborn. This, in fact, is the hub, was the hub of Atlantis, which stretched all the way back to Machu Picchu and that whole entire area. It was the hub. So it was bigger than that. Take your focus down again to your chest. You can use your breath and breathe forward into the pyramid. I want you to imagine a beautiful white pyramid in front of you. Breathe down into your head and into your chest and breathe forward into my pyramid. And I will give you light language activations the moment you all reach there. So breathe down into your chest and forward into my pyramid. You don't have to see until you feel like you've reached there. Some of you are. Keep breathing down into your chest and pushing forward to the pyramid, removing any blockages that keep you from connecting. Because if you don't get there through free will and I force you there, it's not the same. It won't do you any good. Draw it down into the chest and forward to my pyramid. And as you're working on that until you're all connected, I will let you know. Keep doing that until you feel like you're there. No matter how long it feels like it's taking you, just breathe into your chest and breathe forward to my pyramid. And if you want to keep doing it, keep doing it because the more you connect, the powerful the activations will be. And from there, I'm going to draw up the light from the core. So I'm drawing up the light from the core of the earth all the way through your connections and into your feet, into your ankles, into your calves, your knees, your thighs, your hips. I do got to go to somebody's collarbone because my collarbone hurts really bad. And so I'm going to draw up some healing light into what feels like my left collarbone, but I could be mirroring. I need to go there. in our head and also release anxiety. So into our central nervous system, there's anxiety and a little bit of fear. Ah. Ah. Keep breathing to the pyramid. I'm going to continue drawing the light up now to your root, through your root and into your sacral. Uh. From the sacral on up into our solar plexus and our other chakras as well. And into our heart. And that is where I'm anchoring it in. Now I'm going to slowly draw it out from our heart and into the Merkaba. 
I will also be drawing up the crystalline grid light, so the masculine and feminine, because we're going to use this to rebalance, to recalibrate, to recenter, to activate. Some of ours aren't even active at all. Our Merkaba. Your Merkaba must be active to evolve, and it's super important this week ahead. It is a chakra located just outside of your chest, and it has two tetrahedrons. One face, faces up to the sky, and the other faces down to Mother Earth. One is your connection to the moon, one is your connection to the sun. One is your connection to Father God, and the other is to Mother Earth. It's the masculine and feminine divine. Some of you need to replace your Merkaba on the masculine side to match the DNA of my DM. So Metatron is going to step forward at this time. And as I'm drawing the light up through your heart and into your Merkaba, he is going to begin healing them. Once you have connected to the pyramid, I will be doing a light activation as well. So that is coming. And again, I see like Lake Titicaca has gone down even more, the water level. I don't think they're expressing that, but it is. Um, that's the way I see it. And I also see a storm brewing on the earth. I see a storm brewing. A big one. I think I saw this yesterday too. But there is a storm brewing off in the distance. Once your Merkaba is in balance and activated and going, then I will expand the sun into it. So some of you are now getting your masculine side of the Merkaba awakened, but it's changing your DNA structure because it has to match that of my DM. We got to walk in DM. So it's a brand new blueprint. We must align to it. He is Father God. It's true. So we must align to that blueprint. So you're getting a DNA activation. Your Earth Star Chakra is also reading your blueprint. And so is your Akasha Records is also being recorded in real time. And for the rest of you who've already aligned with that DNA of my DM, those that rose with me, um, you're getting yours cleansed and balanced um, and more of a light body each time. So it's semi-light body, it's going deeper. These are deep 70 Merkaba activations. So the Earth's Merkaba is expanding also. It's almost like from a 2D blueprint to a 3D blueprint, but not third dimensional reality, right? Like where it starts to pop out and have multiple layers. Uh, Excuse me. Uh, oh, excuse me again, more releasing. Uh, uh, oh, goodness, that's a lot. Okay. So that is, is still processing through your DNA. So it did change a little bit of your DNA because it has to match that of my new DM. He is the part of the crystalline grid. Um, the moon has changed and shifted. It's all included in that. Okay, this is very real. And it's hard to see the sun and the moon if those are not activated. But now they're starting to balance it. And then we are going to do a full expansion of your Merkaba. It's going to match the earth Merkaba. And it's also going, I'm going to expand the sun. So Metatron is completely balancing them and starting to awaken the feminine aspect of the Merkaba for some. 
And for others, it's prepping the expansion. You were about to take on more sunlight. And I think I said that. I just didn't know how <laughs> it was coming. But I will be expanding it and you will be taking on more sunlight from here. And what is the significance of Lake Titicaca for the sun? They will tell you that is where the sun god rose and fell but rose, okay? Because we undid time. So the rebirth of the sun god occurred here. Uh, uh, Ooh. But, uh, okay, for some reason it's also connecting to a left ear. So my left ear is attaching to the Merkaba. It's almost like um, my auditory canal for somebody was severed from my Merkaba. So I couldn't hear divine frequencies. It was like a very low vibrational attunement. <sighs> ah. mm. And as, Mer as Metatron is doing that with your Merkabahs, because we're getting all different kinds of work here. Some are activating, some are expanding and healing and becoming more of a light body, even more in a 7D creation. I'm going to start to bring the warmth of the sun. Remember, you walked through a very icy Nile River to get here. That was a different anointing from the one. I'm going to start to warm you and heal you with the rays of the sun. So I will start to bring down her rays. I'm literally going to kind of pour a fountain. Okay, this is real. I'm going to take a chunk and I'm going to start to pour a fountain of the sun to your legs. And it's going to kind of go through the water at Lake Titicaca is what I'm seeing. And I'm going to kind of draw the sunlight through the water body here and through the earth. And it's going to work its way through those layers to your feet and just really start to warm your feet. So it's almost like the sun rising through the lake. It's like rising these beautiful rays through the lake. And they're going to come onto your feet and start to warm them and prep them. But I'm also going to take another chunk of the sun, you guys, okay? This is real. All of it is, but like I can't reiterate how important this is right now. And I'm going to start like a fountain, just drawing it down in through the crack I created in Lake Titicaca. And it's making that storm really heightened. I see lightning, like I hear it, and I hear the earth cracking and cracking a little bit. And I'm making sure you are anchored into the core. You need to be really anchored into the core for this one. Because it's a little bit shocking to our system, okay? So we have to be prepped, and that's what Metatron is helping you do with your Merkaba. And that's what I'm doing with the feet, okay? Making sense yet? And so like a slow trickle, I see it going from the crack at the bottom of Lake Titicaca and working its way down into the core of the earth. Welcome to the next layer expansion. This is bigger than you know, more important than you know. I even see the DM's feet here. <laughs> I don't know if that's real, but I do see his feet. I mean, why wouldn't it be real? I will accept that. <laughs> I see his feet here. That's beautiful. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, makes me all warm and fuzzy. Anyways, I'm drawing more sun to the core, more sun to the core. I need to do it in three layers. So layer one, going down and filling it up now. If I did it all at the same time, it would be too much for the earth core to handle. This will also expand her to the next level. The earth and the sun and the moon all work together. And they were out of balance in that. And it has been repaired and realigned. Not only that, we expanded it into 7D. So what we don't realize yet, because the karma is not all cleared off this planet, is that this doesn't just affect us. It will also expand 7D reality. So they're ascending as well. This is not just an Earth expansion. If you guys have watched my work, you know I expanded their galaxy as well. There's a new planetary alignment coming and a lot you don't see yet. And that's okay. It's just not time for a lot of you.
One person is getting an activation in the brain. It's expanding the components of the mind. So there were certain parts of our brain that were dormant, um, but this also is due to the DM activation in the Merkaba. It's like a DNA awakening within you of a new masculine kind, because he is a new masculine. So we have a new blueprint. And it's strange, because it's somewhat of the old one, but a new DNA code of the new one. That is real. Yeah. But he's deserving. He's beautiful. You'll love him just as much as I do, I promise you. Oh, yeah, I promise you that. Hmm. Hmm. All right, so next layer of the sun, I have to pull another chunk down to the core. And it looks to me like a slow trickle, but to the earth, it might be like, vroom. <laughs> so this is layer number two. Now layer number one is going to start going into you through the core of the earth. So it has to be done in this way. When it's all received in you, then I can expand the sun out and the core of the earth too. They work together. They almost belong together. Um, they match DNA, the core of the earth and the sun. So some might actually say we have a sun in our core. It looks like the same. It's like a ball of fire. So round one of the sun is coming up from the core through your connections. I'm slowly bringing it into your feet as I'm also bringing down layer two through the crack and into the core, okay? Working its way through your ankles and your calves and your knees and it is expanding the entire energy structure of you. I have to, we have to evolve. That's why that card was here. This week we have to be able to expand in these energies, okay? You do that by choosing love if you're ready. So it's rising up from that and into our root. It's the sun is expanding through your root and activating you to the expansive sun. And it's going up into your sacral and expanding you and activating it to the sun. She is also in another layer of rebirth. And it's going up from there through your navel and into your solar plexus, but also into some of our new chakras that we have. And it's expanding all of them. So for some of us, we have new chakras in the system. They're still being developed and born and restructured and expanded as well. Um, but this is expanding those too. And now in the solar plexus, as I draw up the sun, I'm going to spend some time in there with it. That's like the main point of it where I want to keep most of it. But I will take the rest into the heart and then into the Merkaba. But I'm really focusing the sun to the solar plexus. Very important. And mine is getting another layer of love. And I'm really drawing it into my DM. He's got to be here because I really just want to give him so much love right now. Like so much love. And I'm, I want to put a lot of sun in his solar plexus. <laughs> like, I really do. <laughs> and I can see the moon like glowing from his chest. I'm getting emotional. I'm sorry. <sighs> Now that you've received layer two, I will slowly draw, I mean layer one, I will start to draw up layer two as I bring down the final flow from the sun to the core of the earth. So I'm reaching up and I'm creating another drawdown of the sun. It's slow for me, but the earth feels a little jolt from it, okay? So it is a lot of power. But for me, it's very like a slow trickle. It's just like I'm just pouring a little sunlight. And the earth is like, what? <laughs> it causes an expansion. So it goes into the lake and in through the crack at the lake that I created and down into the core of the earth. And as I'm doing that, you're starting to receive layer two up into your feet, your ankles, your calves, your knees, your thighs, and your root chakra. I'm letting it fill up your root very slowly and then from there into your sacral, your navel, the new chakras that some of us have, of course, they're expanding, and then into our solar plexus and I really want, want it to fill up our solar plexus. 
and again, I feel super emotional with my DM. Like, I just really want to give him so much sunlight and so much love there. Just so much. It's insane. It's an, it's an incredible feeling. And, like, give all of you that love as well. It's super, super. I feel like that is um, just and warranted. <sighs> Big, like. Yeah. And then I'm drawing more up to the heart and out into the Merkaba. So we're going to start to expand your Merkaba. And now I will be bringing up the third round. So more sun up through your connections into your feet, your ankles, your calves, your knees, your thighs, and your roots. And I will expand your root out more. So it almost feels like my root is on fire. It's heated, like, like almost like somebody just put icy hot in my root chakra. And I'm taking it from there into my sacral, my navel, and my solar plexus. And it's so weird. I keep going from that area to my DMs. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> and really expanding out the solar plexus even more because it's, it's, a, it's connected a lot to the sun. Um, and so I need to expand it out. So your solar plexus is expanding times three. Your Merkaba for some of you expanding times two and for others a little bit more. And then I will draw more to the heart and out into the Merkaba. And now I will do the light language activations from my pyramid at Lake Titicaca. Uh, you guys, I can see my DM's pyramid there too. Remember he had one, it just wasn't fully built. It's reflecting big time right now, and I haven't seen it in a while. That's amazing. So I feel it. Like, it's receiving the sun and this activations as well. How beautiful. Oh, my gosh, how beautiful. Anyways, here comes the light activations. It's going to go into your heart space where you connected to. So I will draw up God's light over the sides of the pyramid and then from the top it's going to reflect to your heart. And that's how you're going to receive these light code activations. They are true divine light code activations from the sun. Kumpala kantara kandala kirion. Kintila kapan to the one to the unto. Kampala kataman to the dan to the win to the ear. Now I see things every time I speak these. And if your heart is awake enough, you'll start to too. But for the meantime, what I see is this light language. It's like the language of God. It's not English, right? It's almost like alien esque. And it lights up the side of the pyramid. And from the top, it shoots to your heart space and it's activating it. These are pure divine light code activations from the sun, from the one. Another wave. And that was like all the sides of the pyramid just lit up, poof, with this light language through the top and into your heart. Again, light code activations from directly from the sun, from the one. Also, you guys don't realize that was the sacral chakra of the earth. Okay, so now I'm going to expand the sun, and you will already be receiving that. 
for those that are ready. Some of you are not. You received what you are ready for today, and so this expansion will flow into those that are ready only because it's a lot. Metatron is still balancing and clearing and activating and healing your Merkaba and awakening it for some, making sure all your DNA matches the masculine and feminine and all of that. Okay, light body Merkaba is the whole nine yards. This is big. It also affects your third eye and your heart um, and other components of your body that are just not being mentioned. Okay, so the way I'm going to expand the sun, this is unique. I've never done it like this before, but I'm seeing a light directly from God. So I'll be drawing a light um, through God into the sun and expanding that out. And then in the final pull, I will just shove it into the earth, okay? Uh. Into the core, into the core. Bungundua lankam bando, di de lankam bando wanda, lankam bando wanda, pukunturi and dirikinturu untua. It's like the flow of the light from God's hand, just like going into the sun. And it's affecting my head. Like, seriously, I feel like my head is expanding and my heart and everything. So it's, um, I'm reflecting what's happening, um, but it's literally like God's hand shoving light into the sun. That's the best way I can describe it. It's an energy ball, and it is expanding. It has to go a little slowly. He's literally filling up the core of the sun with light, pure Christ light. Ooh, this is big. So it is like a bright flash just came off the sun. Now that's weird because I know it's already bright, but I feel like it just went boom, like very blinding light just reflected all around the sun and off of her, like boom. And then a little bit more light in from Creator, literally from God's hand, right to the sun. <laughs> Some of you guys don't realize we have three reflections of the sun because we've combined with the Pleiades galaxy. So on this expansion, a light is going from that side of the sun into the other two. And they will grow slightly too. This also affects the Pleiades galaxy. And now I'm going to take a big chunk of that and shove it into the earth through Lake Titicaca. And I see it like hit the water and like poof, big waves just went boom out to the side and down into the core. Through Lake Titicaca is important. And it went right into the core and the core is like it's heating up and expanding and trying to accept it. So I have to make sure she can accept it all. I also need to shift the core slightly on its axis. And with that, a trickle is going up your connections as well for those that can receive a little bit more. And Metatron is making sure that you are receptive to all of this light. Some he's already had to cut off because too much at one time would actually do more harm than good. And for the rest, he's holding space to allow you to absorb. And I even see it in my DM. There is straight up a DM energy here. And I feel like it's mine. Oh, I could cry. I feel like I've cried enough today. <laughs> it's so beautiful. And it's actually going into his uh, pyramid. I haven't even... I forgot about that because that was a while ago. His blueprint was there. But it's also reflected at the Sphinx. Just like so much beautiful sun energy now going to the Sphinx. So I feel like I'm taking more and shoving it into the Sphinx area. I like purging any shadow from there. Because that's where he was murdered.
So I'm just making sure the core is absorbing. She's expanding. It is expanding, but you're connected to her, so it's not too overwhelming. But the sun is expanding now as well in a very big way. So I feel like the sun is a little bit more heated, right? It's like, like a ball of fire that just got way more hotter. And then there's two more suns in the reflection that are also expanding slightly, and I will do that more later as we clear more karma off this planet. Hence the Nile cleansing and all. It's all related more deeper than you know. I just feel so happy. I feel a little beat up from the energies this morning, but I feel super happy right now. So thankful we were all here today. I'm still so blessed. Hmm. And I love my DM so much. And I know he loves you all too. I can feel it. I can feel it. And I got so many chills up my side when I said that. So once Merkaba, Metatron lets me know your Merkaba is complete... I will start to ease the energy of the sun connections to your body. Some were already complete, but not all. And then the DNA is also adjusting and activating and awakening and rebuilding. And then your Kasha records are fully being recorded. Each one of you. That is very true. It's all very real, but it's truly written in the Akasha records as well. And now the sun will reach places it doesn't reach fully all the time. And that's what I keep hearing. So what they call planet warming at this point is God return. The earth was a lot warmer than it is now. Uh, it was more even and more balanced uh, uh, weather patterning than it is now. And there were actually longer seasons. And so that's re being reflected too. Okay, so Metatron is now complete with the Merkaba. So I am just going to start to like ease the sun. So it's reflecting off of Lake Titicaca and still warming your feet. I don't think you guys realize how big this was. It will take some time to process. So please give yourself space and don't try to fully understand things. Be observant. Be observant to your body and what happens and what unfolds in your reality. Because Christ is vast. It's very real. Uh. Excuse me. All right. So I feel like we've received enough sunlight. I'm going to put a bubble of light around the core so that she can expand in due time. So I don't want the sun to affect her too quick um, because the earth will have, to have a harder time adjusting. So I want her to expand very slowly and methodically into the core of the earth. That way the earth can adjust more peacefully and not so jarringly. Okay. And then the trees. The trees are going to reflect all that sunlight now into the dome of protection and then I'm also putting another dome of light protection around Israel and for some reason Mr. T Mr. Trump I have to put a bubble around him now like a bubble I don't know why I just do what I'm told when it comes to work of God I don't hesitate and I need to ground him I need to stick his foot into the earth, like literally ground him. So I'm putting some cords from him into the earth. Something's about to happen. And he's not as bad as everybody makes him seem. So people need a clearer perspective of what they listen to. Does it mean that he's going to be the leader? No, it does not. The White House will go never to return again. 
but his purpose is different. So for whatever his purpose is, I need to do this. He's battling uh, one of the puppet masters. Let's just put it that way. And that's what they're saying. That's why there's so much negative always thrown at him. So he is now receiving the armor of God. Do you understand? And then Mount Rainier. Something about Washington. And also uh, Mount Shasta. No, Mount Shasta is dormant. It has no life support. So that needs to be seen as well. And then I see Mount Rushmore, and I really do see it cracking into pieces again. So more truths being exposed, whatever that means, right? I don't know. Okay, so I've capped off the sun. It's like I stopped it now from flowing energy. Whoop, I had to cap it off. Like, and that's gonna continue to expand um, she's going to expand a little quicker than the core of the earth. Again, the core has to be very methodical and slow. And then there's two other suns reflecting from our sun um, that deal with Pleiade galaxy, and those will come into play more. So they're very slowly expanding. We can't go too fast because they can't combine with our karma. They're not karma. They don't have karma to clear. We do. They don't have a shadow. We did. Their vibration's too high, which is why we're going into 7D. Darkness will never reside here again, ever. All right, you guys, so I'm slowly going to start to um, detach us a little bit from Lake Titicaca. The Nile has been removed from the energy. We will not walk back across that. It was a one-way crossing. An anointing of a different kind. I washed your feet. That's what they want me to say. And I'm going to detach us now from my pyramid a little bit. It's like we don't need to remain connected like that so much. We got the downloads that we needed, the activations, the light codes. And so I'm just removing our heart connection to that pyramid. But it's still a part of the earth blueprint, so the more we rise to her, the more we connect with those anyways. So it's not like you're removed forever or permanently or anything like that. Your Merkaba is getting a bubble of expansive time, so it's going to take a few days to really incorporate that work. All right, so now I'm going to start standing you up from Lake Titicaca and the energy in your spiritual form. And as I walk you back, you will allow your central nervous system to expand a little bit more. So that has to be reborn. Some of ours has, and some of ours is just allowing expansion within it. I feel like I'm walking us through Egypt, which is really strange. It's almost like the dirt there. I just feel the dirt on our feet as we're walking. So the Nile is gone, but we're walking on some dirt, right? Like, and as you take each step, that dirt is just really helping to remove any debris from the soles of the feet. Allow them to be more pure and open and, and like connected to the earth more and more. Okay, so now one by one I need to expand your physical vessel to place your soul back in it. I'm, I'm literally making sure it expands out so the expansive self can completely combine. Does that make sense? Because when I take you out, I truly take you out a little bit. 
And so to incorporate fully, you have to expand into yourself. And some of us don't, we try to escape that. We like that expansive state. It's really hard to come back. And so I'm just helping us to come back. We don't come back as jarring as we used to, right? Because we're out of 3D. Uh, that, that world is definitely dying, okay? So it's not so difficult and jarring, but I still have to make sure that we don't uh, have a hard time combining. We're reintegrating. Okay. We are all pretty much back to ourselves. So as you slowly start to feel your presence in the here and the now, I want you to kind of take your focus to your feet, but also imagine the earth, the tree, the dirt, beautiful flowers, whatever your favorite thing of the earth is, I want you to focus on that now. And then I want you to take your focus to your feet, your ankles and your calves and your knees. You can start to wiggle your toes and move your feet if you need to, if you're not already fully back and in yourself. And take your focus up your torso area and your arms and into your fingers and wiggle those and stretch. Like get oxygen in your body because it's expanding, it's evolving, this is evolution. So we need to expand to stretch, get oxygen in it. It's a necessity. Whether you stretch now or when we're done, you're gonna need to stretch, okay? You wanna get oxygen in there and I feel like I need to big time. And then take your focus to your head space and your conscious. And when you're ready, when you're ready, you can open your eyes and fully come to. And as we come to ourselves, you will take yourself outside of the circle of salt because it ends every day almost, right? Like we don't stay there for the, tire, the entirety of the time. It's only for during the transmission. I'm having a hard time opening my eyes. That's not a joke. <laughs> Wow, I'm dizzy as all get out. That was amazing. Oh, I felt the DM so much. It makes me want to cry. I love it. Like, not in the energy. Like, he was here. It was beautiful. I mean, that is energy, but like more than calling him in, you know? <sighs> Oh, Lisa said, so I'm about 300 miles east of Mount Rainier. You guys, is Mount Rainier one that I, I healed so it didn't erupt? There was a couple of volcanoes that I actually healed before I activated the pyramids. Okay, I just said, I'm going to help you. So, uh... Yes, okay, so it might be one that I healed, so I wouldn't be in fear or anything. Um, yeah, if it's one that I healed, you're fine. But I don't know the relation. So where is the uh, president heads? <laughs> With Mount Rush, what do they call that? Anyways, let me help just sent back into her body. Uh, 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 uh. So I'm kind of putting like an anchor from your feet and I'm just going to kind of pull you down. I got to pull you down. I have to expand your vessel just slightly more. I feel like you're one of those that, you know, we're not originally from here. Like I don't feel comfortable here. So we have a hard time coming back sometimes and that's okay. Uh. Uh. 
I feel like my ears just popped. Like I just expanded into it. Uh, and my ears just kind of went, Phew. like I just became one a little bit and I can hear more clearly. You know what I mean? And then I'm going to put another little bubble around you. And I'm going to center your heart and make sure your compass is focused inward. And I want you to just feel, um, feel the dirt and then like beneath the dirt is a layer of water. And I want you to imagine your feet sinking into that dirt until you slightly feel the water. I'm just drawing those feet down into the earth until you slightly feel the water. And I'm making sure your connections are nice and tight to the core. And then I'm removing like some energy from your shoulders, just making sure there's nothing against that, right? Does that make sense? Uh. And then I feel like I'm anchoring you into your Merkaba from the heart space. So further anchor. And then my eyes, like I'm seeing weird. So just saying, I feel like you're seeing upgraded. I, I know we've done a lot of upgrades to the eyes, so I feel like you will be seeing new colors. Especially when you do healings and stuff, you will see new colors. But also the earth will be expressed differently through your eyes now. Just because you're ready. Okay, so I feel like I can remove myself South Dakota is where the Mount Rushmore thingy is? Okay. Why not? See, I don't even know. I just channel this stuff. I don't do all the research all the time. Rushmore and Rainier are the ones. Okay. That's what I was talking about, right? Okay, but Rainier, I think, is one that I healed. Is it not? I, I would have to go back and look through all those videos, but they're all on my channel. All the pyramid activations. Um, I can't, it was during that, the first ones, or Fiji or something, where I healed a couple of, there was two I think that I healed so they won't erupt. Because the earth is not dying, right? She's readjusting. She's claiming back her land, and that's why the pyramids are portals. They were made dormant by the fallen, um, because they knew how to do that. And God didn't cause that flood, right? I talk about that, and they shifted the poles. Good, you're welcome. I, I've destroyed Rushmore a few times. Like, I've done a few things to it. Now, when I was grounding and doing whatever to Mr. T, that's when the focus went to Rushmore. So it makes sense because they're all connected. So, yeah. Rushmore is the, the monument of their, their faces, right? That will will turn to dust at least energetically but also physically um playing out where your presidents will fall i don't i don't try to dictate how it how it's going to unfold um but i know it's all relative the president has yeah so that's affected now remember it's gonna implode and never to be rebuilt again so we'll see how all that happens but we have him going against one of the puppet masters they they call it so he's got a big purpose and that's why they send a lot of hate out towards him now remember also that document was given to him <laughs> by the light so it was it was intentional and now he's having charges against him for it no coincidences those that work with me would know that too um but i um there's a couple of the volcanoes that were healed. So I would think Mount Rainier might be one of them. Don't quote me. We'd have to watch the videos. It's been years of work. For real. For real. Each one of these is about an hour, my friends. I can't make it go any less. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We will see what happens with that. Right? We don't know. We don't assume. We just be. Uh, Lisa, I think it came out too that your environment is one of the more 
active as far as bad things in the air, right? I am grateful for these too. I needed this today, especially after what happened on YouTube and just the shadow, right? can really drain us sometimes. Yeah, okay. I thought so. So, um, for you, I would just say whatever your gut tells you to do without fear. Where fear is involved, you're not hearing clearly, okay? Because God is not fear. Um, you have to consider I'm in Colorado, and there's one of the biggest military bases here. I wanted to leave here and go to the East Coast, but I have been blocked, and now I'm like, oh, good. Now I know why. <laughs> so we never know, right? You're so welcome. Thank you guys for being here and being honest and vulnerable today and speaking your truth because it just might help others. So I really, really, really appreciate those that showed. And good, you have an air purifier, wonderful. Yeah, we can only do what we can do as we're rising out of a toxic world, right? No fear. We're all in the same cesspool a little bit. And so some of us have just been more removed than others through the path. You're so good. It did feel so good, huh? Now, some people might have a major awakening from these, and that's okay. It takes time. As you awaken, you go through stages and levels, and what they would call like a dark night of the soul is just like an emotional dump, right? Um, where truths hit, and it's not always comfortable, um, so like alone periods and things like that, but you're not alone. Trust that you're not alone. There's actually a few of us who've gone through all of the work that I've done and we're very familiar with the effects that it can have. So don't be afraid to reach out in the comments section. One of us can absolutely help you. These are powerful healers that rose with me as well. It's just not always easy to go against what what is different, right? And so we're learning, they're all learning, they're all rising every day, but they're very powerful and connected to the purest light and they have insight and information just as much as I do. So I'm so glad they were all here um, to help, okay? So never, please, if you're doing these and it's hitting you hard, you're not alone, okay? So don't be afraid to just reach out. Sometimes it feels like that is the most difficult thing to do. We learned that in the beginning of this, of this thing today. Um, but when you realize we've all been in that boat and we've all faced the shadow and the adversities and the confusion and the, the feeling of not knowing what to do. And sometimes the hardest thing is just to speak our truth and reach out. But once you do, it is so beautiful, okay? So don't be afraid. Reach out in the comments. Um, whatever you feel like you need to do, we'll be here. Okay, I will, or I know one of them will, I guarantee you. So these, these healings can be intense. They're real. <laughs> they seem strange. Things I say are very weird and different sometimes and unusual, but they're very real. But thank you guys for being here. Thank you for your support on, on YouTube today. And I didn't even have to ask for it. I really, really appreciate that and the strength you all provided me today. And I thank my DM for not giving up, not letting the shadow get to him either. And I'm gonna do the same. My head hurts, my energy feels like shiitake mushrooms from that today. Um, Cause I don't think people realize how much that negative energy reflected my way affects the collective soul and through my vessel. Remember when I processed the earth's death, how painful it went through my vessel. It's all connected, okay? All right, so much love to you guys. Mwah, mwah. You mean the world to me. You really, truly do. And I'm so glad. You guys, we have five viewers. That's the most we've ever had during a live. So I just, I love you all. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Enjoy, enjoy to everybody, enjoy. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow.